Hey guys, Boy here, and today we're going to talk about Sport Sniper. Just like COVID-19, this virus originated in the China region, where pubs are very different from our Western ones. Random Draft is their preferred method of playing Dota, and that ends up mixing all types of heroes and animals together in conditions that are sometimes not optimal, up to the point where no one actually knows how sniper support became a thing, but it's going strong globally. We're not here to fight it today. We are here to embrace support sniper and understand why this hero climbed from a 42% win rate in 7k plus pubs when he was mainly played mid, up to 53% now that support sniper is going mainstream. There are mainly two openers for support sniper and they are the Arbovinum stat build as well as Boots and Tango. I personally prefer Boots since Arbovinum on range heroes is kinda bad, but it's a preference thing. The Chinese players really like to run Tusk plus Sniper, and it makes a lot of sense. This is a combination I've seen in countless pubs, and it works really well both in lane and in the mid game. Level 1 tag team with your W is amazing early on, and you might be confused as to why no shrapnel early. And the answer is quite simple. You're almost always going to mess with the creep equilibrium way too much. There are lanes where you cannot use headshot reliably, but in many you can, and it's usually just better. Watch how Fabi laning versus a clock morphling lane. As a 4, you're never going to be facing a support that has boots at level 1, and so the combination of move speed and headshot allows you to trade pretty well against most laners. So sure, you can trade as sniper support. That doesn't sound like a convincing reason to play the hero, and well, you're right. This hero brings more to the table, and the first noticeable thing is his night vision. Unlike almost every hero in the game, or at least any support in the game, he has 1400 night vision, which gives him a ton of flexibility once the 5 minute mark hits. At this stage, mid heroes are looking for kills around the map and the supports are usually the easy targets, but not only you're much harder to find since you can scout the enemies better, but you also protect your allies with the info you gather. While Sniper is almost as low as a Crystal Maiden and has no real stun, the extra awareness gives the player a ton of ways to position better to deal more damage and survive fights. Watch how he dodges the Monkey King rotation here, but more importantly, he also scouts him for his low HP TA so that both survive. Later into that game, they kill Piao, and thanks to that vision superiority, he scouts a Monkey King TP and is able to disengage in time. This hero also waves clears really well, meaning he can be a pain in the butt for the popular Beastmasters, Death Prophets, just because of Shrapnel. But that also means you can stack and farm camps easily, allowing you to finish eggs, which, at the end of the day, is what makes this hero really good. But we're not talking about eggs yet, because I feel like almost every sniper supporter encountering my pubs only cared about that, so they would disregard fights, tower sieges, and when eggs was done, the game and the players in it were done as well. Going back to that night vision we talked about, look how safe you feel going for ward and deboarding at nighttime. You're not only good at nighttime though, Shrapnel allows your hero to have constant vision on a huge AoE on a huge cast range for a time much longer than Clockwork. Watch how FY gets a double kill when he rotates in this fight in the top lane thanks to his abilities. Besides the ult, the mana cost on snipers are fairly low, allowing you to be a factor fairly often, and in case you need more of it, there's always neutral items or a bassi to help you out a little bit more. I'm also a much bigger fan of Tranko's eggs instead of arcanes in this hero, not only for the price and the HP sustain, but also because it makes you even more slippery to get in and out of fights. In this other game, watch how the sniper can scout the jungling alchemist easily with his vision without putting himself in danger, but more importantly, how it enables his mid ember to kill Kotto a couple of seconds after that. Later into that game, we can see how the vision superiority allows Radiant to fight with the mid-tier 1 up, so they can pressure the Alchemist, and it's just crazy how deep they are diving, but the sniper pick allows that.
While Sniper does have problems in the mid-game, once the enemy starts to get gap close, he makes up for it once the Aghanim Scepter is completed. For instance, in this match, Fabi engages to help his team contest Roshan, and the cast range, as well as the stun duration from his eggs, makes fighting versus Sniper a nightmare. Watch how ridiculous is his range of contribution once they get it. Anyone can be out of position at any time, and that is a quick recipe for a high ground push. Even in games where the kill score seems pretty awful, like this Thames game where he ends up 211, they were able to come back from a 15,000 gold deficit, and in this game, teams dealt more damage than his Underlord and Nature's Prophet combined. In fact, he is the second highest damage of this game, ahead of the enemy OD and PL, just behind his own Slark, and that PL was level 30. Just watch the footage from their second lane of barracks falling to what happens afterwards. The first thing to notice is how Blink and Kaya become very useful on this hero. Not only Blink gives you safety, it also increases your cast range by a thousand. With the cooldown of your ult becoming so low, mana problems naturally arise, and so Kaya is the best way to increase your damage and sustain long fights. This hero in the late game is actually crazy broken, it's quite easy to see why his win rate is so high. Now that 726B makes high grounds even harder to breach and slows the game a little bit further, I expect this hero to become an even bigger nuisance since reaching this stage will become more common. In general, this hero is much stronger in the laning stage than people give it credit for. He is great at wave clear, great at warding, and the warding has pretty much global abilities on a very low cooldown, can defend towers spectacularly well, and the night vision is just an amazing bonus to have. In the late game, one cool trick from teams I saw constantly was smoking in some fights just so he could contribute undetected, since the amount of damage this hero does in the late game definitely makes him a target worth investing initiation on. This hero smells like a meme in the support position, but he is not, especially if you're smart about how you play the first two night times, by scouting and fighting with your team rather than farming your eggs. That while important isn't going to win you many games if you just forget about the game. There's a reason most position 4 players are doing this in high more pubs and, as we already talked about in my opinion, today's patch make this, makes this even better, at least when we're talking pubs. Guys, thank you a lot for watching, commenting and subscribing. If you're interested in coaching, you can DM me on Twitter to get information about it. If you're trying to get better at the game or you just want to find some friends to play Dota 2, we have a pretty cool Discord server with people that are overall pretty nice, so make sure to get there. In case you want to meet people from all around that also likes this game, if you like the channel and you want to help us out, Patreon has a ton of different rewards that you can check. And finally, if you like me, if you like the channel, you can follow me on Twitch to watch me cast and play Dota 2. Thank you all guys, have a good one and bye.